All right, ladies and gentlemen, after a nice long nap, I feel rested enough to do one more of these for you tonight. So here's uh, problem set 9.3. We're gonna start here with bottling cola. So a bottling company uses filling machines, obviously, to fill their bottles. Uh, they're supposed to contain 300 milliliters. Uh, but in fact, uh, the contents vary according to a normal distribution with a mean of 298. So they are slightly under filling on average and a standard deviation of three. All right, so I'm gonna put that info down. Normal, 298, three. Um, and this is kind of why we did all those normal approximations on the last problem set. It was to prepare you for this problem set. So it should be easy. All right, letter A, what's the probability that an individual bottle contains less than 295? Okay. Here's the good news. They said it's normal, so I don't have to um, worry about any checks. We're talking about an individual bottle, so don't have to worry about my standard deviation formula. This is straight out of, I think it was chapter two. Piece of cake. So what's the probability that X is, what was the number? Less than 295. Okay, well, let's get a Z-score. So that is negative one, right? Piece of cake. Okay, uh, and I can look that up in table A. It's a left tail, which fits table A quite nicely. Um, or you can use your normal CDF on your calculator because you have shown all your work. Okay, when you work it out, we should get this. That's not right. Another mistake on the uh, answer key, right? Less than negative one. It's probably the complement of that. Let's check. All right, lower bound, negative infinity, upper bound, negative one. Uh, mean zero, standard deviation one, right? Because I'm using z-scores, standard normal distribution. And sure enough, it looks like whoever made the key uh, forgot to subtract that from one. So I like it when mistakes happen because it makes sure that we are paying attention. I don't know why you would subtract from one though, since it's a left tail. It beats me. They actually probably got the right answer and then subtracted the right answer from one. And that's the kind of thing I do see students do sometimes. So hopefully you won't do it because you've paid attention. And you'll say, wait, less than negative one is less than half of the distribution. So we have to get a p-value that is something like that, not something like 84%. All right, letter B. What's the probability that the mean contents of the bottles in a six-pack is less than 295. All right, so now we have a sample size of six and we wanna find the probability that the average of those six is less than 295, okay? So since we're talking about six bottles instead of one bottle, it's going to make our variance less, which will make um, our probability smaller in this case because our probability um, we're talking about below um, the mean okay um, furthermore since we are talking about six we do need to, to make sure we can use our standard deviation formula um, there are at least 60 <laughs> soda bottles Um, being produced. Uh, so it is safe to use uh, the standard deviation formula. Okay, I keep writing this out over and over and over again, and it makes these videos really long, but that's because I've taught this enough to know that that's what students don't do because they're lazy and then they lose points. So 
Don't be lazy. Write it out. You'll get all the points that way. All right, so let's get our Z-score. Um, and of course, it's a Z-score because the distribution was normal. So um, if I take any size sample from a normal distribution, um, I'm going to have another normal distribution. And what do we have? Three over the square root of six. Okay, and again, I'm trusting the answer key here. Which seems reasonable. So this should be, and again, that sounds fairly reasonable. So I'm gonna go with that. Oh, by the way, we really should write a complete sentence answer here, right? The probability that the mean contents for the six pack is less than 295 milliliters is that. All right, 9.40. Company that owns and services a fleet of cars uh, for its sales force has found that the service lifetime of disc brake pads varies from car to car according to a normal distribution. Mean of 55,000 miles, standard deviation 4,500 miles. The company installs a new brand of brake pads on eight cars. All right, so they're seeing if they um, might want to change to a different brand. Maybe it'll save them money. Maybe it'll cost the same but last longer and therefore save money, right? So, all right, so we have a normal distribution. Mean is 55,000. Standard deviation is 4,500. Okay. Oh, in is eight. All right, if the new brand has the same lifetime distribution as the previous type, what is the distribution of the sample mean lifetime for the eight cars? Well, that's a piece of cake. All you gotta do is adjust your standard deviation by the sample size. So when n equals eight, our distribution would still be normal and our standard deviation would be 4,500 over the square root of eight. Okay. Um, and again, in order to use that formula, they have to have at least 80 cars. I would assume they do if they have this kind of data. Average life of the pads on these eight cars turns out to be 51,800 miles. What is the probability that the sample mean lifetime is 51,800 miles or less if the lifetime distribution is unchanged? All right. So this is the basis of inference right here. Okay. They have some data and they're asking, well, is this data telling me that these brake pads aren't as good as the other brake pads? Or could it just be random chance and we should buy some more brake pads and, you know, investigate further. All right, so we want to know what's the probability that x bar is less than um, 51,800. Okay, um, they told me it's normal, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch into my calculation. go. All right, working that out. Should get a z-score of negative 2.011 and a probability of 0 0.0222. Now, that's pretty small, right? So when you get a probability like that and you're doing inference, you're going to say, in this case, it looks like the new brake pads aren't as good very unlikely that they're equal to the old brake pads and that we would observe such a low result. So we would probably stop buying those brake pads. All right, next question. Uh, the number of traffic accidents per week at an intersection uh, varies with the mean of 2.2 and a standard deviation of 1.4. The number of accidents in a week must be a whole number. 
So the population distribution is not normal. This is true. Remember, a normal distribution is, of course, a continuous distribution. But I have a sneaky feeling we're going to be able to treat it as if it were normal. Let's keep reading. Let x bar be the mean number of accidents per week at the intersection during a year. Ah, so now we're talking about the distribution of x bar. And the central limit theorem says as long as n is reasonably large, 52 is certainly large enough, that our distribution will be approximately normal. So the approximate distribution of x bar here will be a mean of 2.2 accidents uh, per week. And my standard deviation is going to be 1.4 over the square root of 52. And again, in order to use that, the intersection must be around for at least 520 weeks. Right? Assume the intersection has been there for at least 520 weeks. standard deviation formula. Okay. And in the problem, they already told you um, central limit theorem. So if you want to rewrite that central limit theorem assures approximate normality, that would be fine. Um, if it were the AP exam, I would certainly do that, you know, even though they already stated it for you. <clears throat> And, oh, okay, that's it. Letter B. What is the approximate probability that X bar is less than 2? Okay. Get a Z score. That z-score should be negative 1.0304, yielding a probability of 0 0.1515. Again, feel free to check that with your calculator. This is the correct work. So um, that's really all you, you got to show the correct work and then check, you know, check that and Makes sense. That looks about right. Um, and again, AP test, please write that answer in a complete sentence, right? The approximate uh, probability that X bar is less than 2.1515. <clears throat> Let's see, what is the approximate probability that there are fewer than 100 accidents at the intersection in a year? Okay. Um, remember, we're dealing with X bar, right? So we have to think in terms of X bar here. Okay. So we're asking what's the probability that X bar is less than 100 over 52 because that would be the mean for the year that would create 100 accidents, right? And there you go, get another Z-score. There's your work. Figure out what that Z is. Apparently it is negative 1.4267, yielding a p-value of 0 0.0768. So about an 8% uh, chance that we get 100 accidents or less in a randomly chosen year. Again, you should write that uh, sentence out if it's a free response question. Multiple choice, circle it, move on with your life. 
All right, 42, last question, yay. Testing kindergarten children. Children in kindergarten are sometimes given the Raven progressive matrices test to assess their readiness for learning. Hmm, how fun. Experience at Southwark Elementary School suggests that the RPMT scores for its kindergarten pupils have a mean of 13.6 and standard deviation of 3.1. The distribution is close to normal. All right, so here we go. Approximately normal, 13.6, standard deviation, 3.1. All right, Mr. Levine has 22 children in his kindergarten class this year. He suspects that their scores will be unusually low because the test was interrupted by a fire drill. To check this suspicion, he wants to find the level L, such that there is probability only 5% that the mean score of 22 children falls below L, when the usual distribution remains true. What is the value of L? All right, so this is an inverse normal calculation. Okay, so we need a left tail with an area of 5%. Um, you can, of course, use table A or use your calculator. So I'm going to do inverse normal. So that's the z-score that would correspond to a left tail area of 5%. Okay, oh, let's just write things out. So um, we know that z equals um, x bar minus mu. So there's our formula. Now we're gonna start filling in all the pieces of the puzzle except for uh, one. That's what we're gonna solve for, the x bar. Notice they didn't tell me the mean. That's what we're solving for this time. That's why it's called an inverse, right? Normally we have that and we're solving for the z. This time we have the z, we're solving for the x bar. All right, so negative 1.645 x bar minus 13.6. 3.1 over the square root of 22. And again, this is just a straight inverse normal calculation. You've done these before, so hopefully it's a piece of cake. All right, so we're going to get the x bar. Right, multiply by that. Add 13.6. We should get... Do, 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 do. x bar has to equal 12.513. So if a class of 22 students had that as its mean, that class would be in the lowest five percentile. That's all we just found, the lowest five percentile. Oh, we should have confirmed that we could use our standard deviation formula, so let's do that real quick. Um, this time we're gonna have to assume, we must assume least 220 kindergartners at this school. It's a pretty good assumption. I mean, how else would they have this data, right? You're not going to get this data if you didn't have a pretty good sample size. Okay, uh, and normality was given. Oh, the other thing I haven't been doing, gosh, there's just so much. <laughs> I haven't been talking about the data. Um, we also have to treat this sample of 22 as an unbiased random sample. So uh, we must um, treat Mr. Levine's class as... Oh, actually, we don't have to. Um, huh. Yeah, my brain, not all there. We don't have to because this is an inverse normal. We didn't actually use the data from his class. We're saying, what would the data have to be, right? So we, we really actually don't have to do this, but um, typically you do, you know, when you do a problem, you, you would say we have to treat this person's class uh, as a random sample of all possible classes and therefore unbiased. All right, guys. 
Uh, again, sorry that uh, I can't be in person to do this with you. Hopefully uh, this suffices. Have a good one.